Hi, I'm Bruce Berry with Beulah Fly Rods. We're out here on the Clearwater River with North 40 Outfitters, and today we're going to go over single spay. I think this is a great cast along with snap tee, double spay, and most of your sustained anchor cast or waterborne anchors. These are touch and go cast. So uh, the rod I'm using today is a Beulah Onyx 1297. It's matched with a 450 Elixir Sca uh, Scandinavian line. And I've got a poly leader, tippet, and a fly. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about real quickly is just grip. And I think it's a couple of things. One is most rod companies will give you a grip anywhere from four and a quarter inches long to about five and a half or six. They're really not designed for your whole hand as it locks up your wrist and we more efficiently load the rod and make casts when we have the ability to move better. So just get that ball in the palm of your hand, thumb vertical, top hand thumb vertical, about shoulder width apart, plus or minus in your comfort range, and the thumbs on top are gonna to help us line everything up to make good cast. So there's a little thing on, on basic grip. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is foot position. So this first single spay is a touch and go cast, meaning that when I'm done with my last cast and I'm on the dangle, we make a lift, sweep the rod and go into key position. The line tension breaks free from the water. It comes up, kisses the water, and as soon as it kisses, we cast. And probably the best way to get rod timing and rod path and that kind of stuff is to make this cast straight downstream at first. So that's where I'm gonna aim straight to the dangle for a couple. Then we'll turn around and move them into the water where the fish are. So the first thing I wanna do when I'm making a single spay is get my feet correct. Not all rivers are gonna let you do this. This is a great piece of of water for putting your feet wherever you want to. They're anywhere from golf ball to flattened basketball sized rocks and fairly easy wading. So I'm gonna go right foot forward. From straight down, I'm gonna put my right foot just inside of my casting target. My left foot, I'm gonna square off behind me and that allows me to use body movement back and forth. That'll come into play a little bit later. So I've got my feet set, and we can notice that if I'm casting straight downstream, my hips and shoulders are facing the bank. We're on river left on the clear water, meaning the water's going from right to left. So my body, hips and shoulders, and you'll hear different philosophies on how to cast and how to set your body. Um, pick one according that works for you. But I'm actually facing the bank, and there's a reason for that. So on this first cast, I'm gonna lift, sweep the rod around, make an anchor, cast it downstream, and we're just using the head and a little bit of hangover hangover being the amount of running or shooting line outside the rod tip. So here we go, I got my grip, I got my feet position, and the lift is pretty easy. I'm just kinda gonna do a slow, controlled, deliberate bicep curl with my dominant hand, let my bottom hand follow, and I just bring the rod up, decreasing the amount of stick of line to water contact, and putting a little bit of load or bend in the rod. So it's nice and slow, nothing hurried and herky-jerky. If you guys can see the line, you'll see that it comes up nice and evenly tensioned, no sag and no slack. Or if I make a fast lift and an abrupt stop, we send slack and shock waves. And the other thing about that lift is it kind of allows you, if you're going slow and deliberate, to keep your brain one step ahead of the next process coming. Um, spay rods tend to have like a golf swing, you're doing one A, B, C, two A, B, C, and they come in rapid succession. So the lift is just really simple. Reverse bicep curl out in front of you, let your left hand follow. I've got my rod roughly at a 45 degree angle. And at the top of the lift, before I stop, I'm gonna spin my hips and shoulders so that now I'm now facing my casting direction. And having my front foot or right foot in front of me, just inside the casting direction, allows me to get square to my target thumbs on top as it comes around. At some point in time during the sweep, lift, sweep, the line's gonna break free from the water. And I really haven't done anything with my arms. I'm forcing the rod to do the work and I get to do less work. I gotta do some work as a caster, but I want the rod to do the work for me. As that line breaks free, and you no longer feel the tension of the pull of the line and water connection, that's when you're free to move your hands into the D-loop position. Really, you can kind of do anything you want with your hands once the line breaks free from the water. And the key position is essentially where I'm going to fire from or where I'm going to cast from. Okay, from there, the line's traveling up towards me and it's going to kiss the water. And where it kisses the water is anchor placement, and that's very important too. So these downstream casts is kind of a skill builder for a single spay. 
So if I go lift, spin my hips and shoulders, line breaks free from the water, then I'm gonna take a look at where the line lands. As I pull this in, I want my fly and most of the leader in front of me. You're gonna get more power that way. The connection between the terminal end of my fly line and the leader, this is a poly leader, I want a rod's length and an arm beside me to three, four feet in front of me. So I'm looking for that anchor point to land right in that range. And then I'll know that I'm applying the right amount of sweep speed to the, to the, uh, to the cast. So if we look at that, I'm gonna take step one and step two, lift, sweep, and the line's landing right here off my rod tip just in front of me. That's a really good anchor. And you'll find that you don't, even to get better with this cast, you don't necessarily have to make the full cast. You could make 50 or 100 anchors, take a look at them, roll cast it downstream, and get consistent with that. And you'll find that with most casts, the rod speed or the sweep speed is going to stay the same, Skagit and Scandi. So we'll do that again. Lift slow, hips and shoulder turn. That landed right off my right shoulder, 90 degrees, and a rod length away. So I know I'm pretty good. Get that downstream. So the last piece of the pie is to make the, the finished cast. So if our anchor placement's good, then once it kisses the water, I make my forward cast. And all I'm gonna do is try to transfer some weight to my forward foot, bring the rod forward, and then pull the bottom grip. Just tap on the bottom handle and make a cast and finish it. So here's what it looks, all three pieces together. Feet are in the right position, facing the bank. Nice slow lift, spin the hips and shoulders, key position, cast. When it looks easy and feels easy, you're probably doing it right. One, two, three, four. And the other thing that you're gonna notice with these spay casts is that good spay casting is fairly silent. So what we mean by that is I'm gonna make a cast here with kind of a weird wavy rod path and you end up putting a lot of line stick on the water and when you hit it, you're gonna get a rip of the line coming off the water and a lot of spray. That means one of two things. Generally, it's either gonna be timing, putting your hands back in the key position, waiting for it to kiss. If you wait too long, the D-loop's gonna sag. You get a lot of water stick. They'll rip off the water. Or it's a rod path thing. And that's a point in time when you can probably just put your eyeballs and you know, fix them onto the rod tip and watch what's going on. Oh yeah, it's probably a tip tracking issue, right? The other one where cast, this cast will get a little bit crazy. So if I do everything right, and wait a split second too long, the D-loop's gonna form and fall, and then have to rip more line off the water. It's gonna be an energy robber, it's gonna rob distance, it's gonna take away the ability to cast bigger flies. Just make it tougher in the wind as well. So setting this up, making good anchors, making good sticks, and being on time, it's gonna feel easy, and it's not gonna have a whole lot of sound to it. We'll try to make a good one here, so you guys can see it. Lift, sweep, key, kiss, go. Fairly silent, no real water splash coming off. Lift, sweep, key, cast. There we go. The other thing before we turn these around, mid-river, there's a couple of keys I wanna go over. When you get lined up, it's gonna, this is gonna be a big one for you. Okay, so as I'm coming around, I'm kind of bracing or blocking my arms. I'm using my hips and shoulders to bend the rod. I haven't moved them a whole lot. When I finish, and the flies broke free from the water, I then get into the key position. Essentially, I'm just kind of like flipping the frisbee behind me, letting the rod roll over, getting my left hand out in front. And the other thing is, is we'll notice that I'm lined up on the edge of my body with both hands, thumbs up the grip, everything's straight. That's gonna be key for making straight cast that turn over straight and land straight and don't come into the bloody L. If we come in and we get a good D loop, but our hand's in the middle of our body, and this hand's over here, maybe the rod's under-rotated. It's workable, it's serviceable, but you'll probably run into problems with consistency and ease of casting consistently. Um, and then as, as well with distance. So the last thing I wanna hit before we actually turn these around in the river is just that you don't necessarily have to cast harder to cast farther. So we'll pull a little bit of line off. Not a ton. But nice and easy, 
And on that last cast, I'm thinking about accelerating to a stop, not hammering it from the word go right out of the key position. I'm accelerating into it, getting the rod loaded, and then tapping the bottom handle late, making a cast. So without shooting line, boom, boom, boom. Okay, we get that downstream here. And if I want to shoot some line, same thing. And that's maybe, I don't know, 25, 30, 35 feet of line. I didn't really cast any harder to cast farther. So timing and technique, rod path, rod speed, key position. Once you get those things so that they're pretty good most of the time, you're going to find that distance comes easy and you really don't have to hit the rod hard to get it. Um, which is nice because you feel like you're working with the rod and you're utilizing that expensive two-hand piece of equipment you bought rather than fighting it. Um, so those are a lot of the basics for that single spay. And this is something that a lot of guys want to know. Like I said, it's a great, learn all the casts, learn off shoulder, learn snap T, learn double spay, learn with your left hand on top, put all the, put all the casts in your quiver. It's great to have them. You never know when you're going to need them. Um, this is a very efficient cast. It gets the water from the dangle and out to the fish, fishing quick and efficiently. Just a terrific cast to know. Um, so once we do that, generally like when I'm in a class and we get this part down really well, then we can actually change our foot position and we're going to make this change of direction from the end of the last cast to where we think the fish are out mid-river. And essentially all we're doing on that first cast, we were taking the rod, you know, roughly 180 degrees in that range and making a cast. So now to make the anchor and change directions, I'm just using a little bit more body rotation and rod rotation to come around and change directions. So once you get this mastered straight downstream, it should be a really easy transition to making good fishable consistent casts. Managed some running lines getting away from me. Okay, so the first thing that I think that's really important, like we went over foot position, I'm gonna pick a target. I just see a bare patch of rocks across the river. So I'm gonna take my right foot upstream of my casting target just a hair, block my left foot behind me. I'm gonna start on the dangle with my foot over my front foot. And as I finish the lift and start the sweep, I'm just gonna straighten that leg and bend my back leg and transfer my weight back and transfer my weight forward. That's gonna help me make better casts more often. It's gonna help me get them out in the wind. And um, it's excellent if you want distance. I mean, really the only way you can get distance with good body transfer and longer rod path. So there's my hips and shoulders facing my target. And as I face my dangle, I think Calvin went over this in a previous video, that I'm facing the dangle and I've got my body facing downstream. It's, it's a great way to start. So, wait till on my front foot, and I start that initial lift. Get that thing down there. Start my initial lift, hips and shoulder spin, go into key, let it go, easy as pie. We'll make one or two more casts just so hope we can hopefully get a good one. And away we go fishing. Last one we'll look for a little bit more distance, but I don't want to put a whole lot of extra effort into it. Reverse curl lift, spin my hips and shoulders, kiss the water, and away we go fishing. Probably the last thing I can give you guys a tip for, for consistent anchor placement, we'll go through two pitfalls really quickly, is when you're on the dangle, sometimes the water's not going to let your fly come all the way straight downstream from you, sometimes the water's going to pull it past you. The run that I'm in right now, if I leave it, will sweep all the way around behind me. That's probably going to make it a little bit tougher to keep consistent anchor placement. So if that happens, I get a tangle in my running line, I don't have it gathered up properly, i got to let it go and the fly comes inside and it keeps coming inside and I'm almost ready for my next cast. Everything's gathered up, it looks good. I grab my main line, take everything over the line guard, got my bottom hand on the rod, oh it came inside. A quick roll cast, straight downstream, now I'm in a really good position to come around get a good anchor placement and a good cast. Starting with the lift, good lift, good sweep, good key, 
good anchor point, good cast. Everything's easy and fun. And the last thing is, is pay attention to the anchor placement. Generally when you go from the straight down steam, stream skill building cast into the actual cast, and this was key, I maybe didn't hit this point hard enough. As we do the lift and the sweep, all I did was spin my hips and shoulders and transfer my weight. I've done enough to know that that anchor is going to land in a predetermined point where I want it to. What I didn't use in that sequence there was arms. All right. So if I compound with arms, swinging it around into key early before the lines broke free from the water, I'm going to compound the power and the anchor's going way upstream. We'll do that for you so you can see it. And I make my lift, I start with my hips and shoulders and I use my arms. Uh, the anchor's got to be 45, 50 feet upstream. It's managed failure. You can make casts that way. You can catch fish that way, but you'll see bloody L's. You'll see difficulty in wind. So keep your anchor placement a rod length or so and an arm away from you. This one I'm going to have in front of me again, and I want to keep it in that zone. The more comfortable you feel with leaving your fly on the water and not breaking your anchor, the more you can draw that fly closer to you. Stack the D loop underneath your rod tip and really benefit from power and distance when you have those places where distance is important. Last cast, here we go. You roll cast that downstream. Weight's on my front foot. Nice slow lift, hips and shoulders spin, weight transfer, key position. Let it rip and hope for a fish. Thanks for stopping by and taking a look.